you see him underneath. Oh, boy, he hit that thing. There she is. Look at her, look at her. Oh, she's got that thing in her mouth. She loves it. She loves that big old chartreuse. Popper, nice fish. I'll tell you something. When I can catch smallies like this on topwater baits like this, I get excited. Fact is, any kind of fish, when they're hitting top water, is the most enjoyable fishing experience you'll ever have. And you want to know something? For a lot of species of fish, top water fishing, particularly popping, can be the best thing you're doing. Little guy, but he was there. Oh, that was a good fish. You seen how those fish are so tentative like that? They're not blowing up on that bait. That's your cue when, when you miss a lot of them and they roll underneath it but don't hit it. That's your cue that you got to fish really, really slow. That's your indication. You know, basically, there's two types of retrieves you use when you're fishing a popper like this. When the weather is stable, clear water, fish are active, aggressive. When they're blowing up on a bait, that's your indication that they're active. And I fish very aggressive when this is happening. I'm really moving a bait like this. I'm going doop, 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 doop. I mean, I'm moving that bait a solid 10 feet and then a short pause. Then doop, 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 doop. You're really spitting, 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 spitting with a very short pause. That's all you have to do. The fish are active and they're coming in on it. Top of your retrieve, you're usually fishing the rod high. The last half of the retrieve, you're working it low. The next retrieve, when fish are negative, they've been pressured, cold fronts come in, uh, uh, you see fish coming under the bait, but they're not quite hitting it. That's when you've got to really slow down. You throw out, you leave the bait hit, and you leave it sit a second. Then you go just a short. I mean, you barely move the bait 10 inches, and it just sits there. Again, just sits there. And what is happening, those fish are coming out of that cover when they're negative or neutral, and they're looking, looking, looking. And you don't want to fish the bait away from them. You've got to give them time to ease up underneath it. You'll see it with smallmouths a lot. They come up and they, they tip their head sideways and they look at that bait. They come closer and closer and they suck the bait down. They don't explode on it. When they're sucking, you got to fish real slow. When they're exploding, you fish fast. That simple. To be successful with any lure, you really have to understand the design of the bait itself. Basically, a skitter pop has a cup lip, a buoyant balsa body, and a feathered trailer hook. Combined, they formulate a deadly lure. The unique cup lip traps air as the bait is jerked subsurface, which in turn creates the popping sound and a surface disturbance. A slow retrieve with a single hard jerk pulls the bait deep and makes a bassy sound, while a quick skittering retrieve, on the other hand, creates more surface disturbance with a high pitch sound. A balsa body quickly brings the bait back to the surface while the tail dressing serves as an attractor. You have to experiment with the speed and cadence of your retrieve every time you're on the water. The activity level of your target species really dictates the best retrieve, and that can change a lot throughout the course of a day of fishing. Oh, got him. You see him slurp on that thing? Boop, 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 boop. Look, look, there's another one with him. Look at this, look at this. Look, you see the other, see his buddy? Look, I'll, I'll, I'll try to hook both of them. He's, he wants to take that bait out of his mouth. There's three of them. There's another one down there. Uh, oh, look at him. Oh, there's some good ones down there with him. I got the little guy. I got the little guy. But you know what? We'll quick get him off. Get back in there and get that other, get that other big dog. Ooh, there was a nice one with him. Really a nice one with him. You know, there's really a heck of a lot of situations where topwater bites like the skitter pop are really an effective presentation. More than a lot of people think about. Uh, 
stability like we have today, good stable weather, naturally is a key. That increases the top, the odds on a good top water bite. Uh, insect hatches, like mayflies or dragonflies, will cause a lot of fish to feed high. Water clarity has a lot to do with it. The best top water bites are usually in clear to stained water environments. Forage has a lot to do with it, where you've got a, lot, a lake with a lot of suspended forage, like shad or smelt or ciscos. Situations like this, fish come off a structure a lot and go out and suspend and chase the open water bait fish. And you can get tremendous bites of fish during low light conditions or on hot muggy days like this, fishing over 30, 40 feet of water. You know, and that's something a lot of people don't do. I think I'm going to get another bite in here. This is a real good area right here. Look at one just swirled under it. He, 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 see the boil behind the bait? He might bite this. Watch this. Look at him. Oh, whoa, I love it. I love it. Did you see him just go? Whoa. Oh, my heart's going thunk, 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 thunk. When you see them babies <laughs> sitting under there, they come up, they look, they look, they look, and he says, should I or shouldn't I? Andy said, yes, I will, because I'm going to make your day. <laughs> you know, not only are there, you know, weather and water conditions that have a lot to determine when you start topwater fishing for any kind of fish, not only smallmouth. Another thing that you got to keep in mind is there are seasonal conditions, seasonal times when the top water bite is really, really good. Right now, I happen to be fishing a post-spawn bite. I don't know why it happens, but for post-spawn fish, particularly smallmouth, it's an excellent, excellent time to zero in on a top water bite. Skitter pops work in a wide range of conditions for a variety of fish species, some of my favorite situations to fish poppers are over and around expansive boulder flats. Hey, make sure to target the largest rocks or high spots on these flats. Isolated covers such as fallen wood or flooded brush are great popping water. In these conditions, remember to slow your retrieve speed down to call fish out that could be holding deep in cover. When casting around emergent vegetation like lily pads or reeds, Target edges and open casting lanes where fish corral and hunt bait fish. For toppers, one area that may surprise some anglers are steep dropping bluff walls or deep points. In many waters, fish feed on forage that suspend high in a water column. Fishing skitter pops over deep water can be phenomenally effective at certain times. Look at him right under it. He's under it. He's right on it. He's going to hit it. I've seen them coming, I've seen them looking, looking, looking. You got, you got to really leave it set. Some of them fish I missed because I pulled it away from them too. You know, I just pulled it away from them too darn fast. That's what I did. That little guy took him a little while to decide, you know, what he's, what he's going to do. He ain't no big one, but he's a small one. Hey, you know, when it comes to tackle, it's pretty cut and dried as far as I'm concerned. I like using bait casting rods when I'm fishing poppers like this. I like a six foot rod, medium action, so it's a fairly fast tip. It just fishes the bait easier. And anywhere from 10 to 20 pound test line. That way you can fish really big baits. You can fish them down to smaller baits depending on the kind of cover you're fishing in. And actually, if you want to, and you're fishing real small poppers, you know, you can go to a spinning rod for the littler baits. And sometimes they fish a little, a little better. But day in and day out, I like a bait casting rod. Hey, something to always keep in mind is size and color. These are two important considerations that are always a part of the equation. On some days, color or size or a combination of each of them can make all the difference in the world between a good day or a great day. As a general rule of thumb, in clear water environments, you want more natural or neutral looking baits, smaller in size and you fish them fast. 
In darker water environments, you want bigger baits, baits with a lot of color, and you fish them very, very slow. Naturally, these are just guides. Key thing to remember, you want a good variety of sizes and colors in your tackle box of your favorite bait. You see them underneath? Come here, baby. Oh, look at her, look at her, see if she's got any buddies with her. Look at her in the water there. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Come on out this way. I want to get you back off that point. <laughs> Well, there's a lot, a lot of fish on this point, I'll tell you that. A lot of fish on this point. It's so much fun when you see them come up under that bait. You know how they look at it, look at it, and then all of a sudden they can't help themselves? They got a, they got a bite on it, huh? They got a bite on it. Whew. Well, I love catching small fish like this. On top of water. I'll tell you, there's really a lot, a lot of situations that poppers, like the skitter pop, work for a wide variety of fish. And there's sometimes, no not sometimes, a lot of times where it is absolutely the best presentation you can be chunking.